Listen here. It's a terrible time for a mean old man. You got to get to heaven just as fast as you can. A long time forgotten about the good old days when a nail and a hammer got a four-man piece. Okay. So I think I tried to stay as close to about two minutes there. I think I got up to six passes or six crosshatch runs. So you notice we were doing what's called crosshatch, where you go across first horizontally, and then you change direction to go vertically, and each time you overlap by around about half the size of the pad. That will give you a consistent coverage over the piece that you're working in. That's why as well, the piece is better, maybe if I'd have gone more of a square than a rectangle, because the crosshatch will start working better. But anyway, it's fine. What I'm gonna do now is quickly wipe this product off, just with no, there's no IPA or anything, I'm just gonna wipe this product off the car to start with. And then once I've got most of it off, I'll go in with the IPA. Why well, it's not a good idea to have tape in the middle of the car because the product gets stuck underneath it. Now I'm going to put a little bit of IPA on there just so I can inspect it properly. I need to tighten that up. That was putting on too much product. That's fine. Okay, so what I, what I want to do is before we're going to go and have a look at this work in a second and see what sort of uh, level of correction we've got. So the key things there that I wanted to talk about that we've done is, hold on a second. Okay, sorry, just got sidetracked there. So, um, yeah, so the key things I want to talk about when we're doing that polishing, one, lay out your polish first over your target area at speed one. Stop the machine. Never have the machine running when it's not on the on the car because you will throw polish everywhere. We also, because it was our first ever run, we used four dollops to prime the pad. Now we're going to be using three that the pad's primed. Once you've laid your, your film of product out at speed one, you then ramp up your speed. And I was doing it about four there, which is normally I'll go a bit faster. But like I say, I thought this clear coat would be quite easy to work with and I can see it is. So actually that's quite a sensible speed. So I'll probably stay near that speed. Then we worked that product by working the machine very slowly with hardly any downward pressure, just a little bit, just, just so it sort of bites in there. And we work it about sort of one inch per second arm movement. Um, and we work that compound for about 90 seconds to two minutes. And what you want to do, I think I was counting my passes and I think I did six. So whatever panel I want to do now, I need to remember, because I want to take off the same amount of clear coat all over the car when I'm doing this compounding. I don't want to be doing loads of passes on one particular bit and then half a pass on another because I'll be taking different levels off. So six, I've done six cross hash passes on this particular piece. And we're gonna now zoom in and have a look at the piece and see what the damage is like. Okay. So, I've put these cloths down to sort of show the area we've really polished. Um, and we are really seeing everything here. So this is the good thing. Right. First of all, most of that's, uh, this clear coat's nice and soft actually. And it's, um, the damage is coming out really nicely. Now I think, I can still see, I don't even think you'll be able to pick it up on the camera. There, once you focus in, there is still some damage in this paintwork. Still some tiny micro scratches. You can see it just as the camera flips in and out of focus. So I would probably want to go again because the correction has worked really nicely and the clear coat's starting to come back. But there is still damage in there. So I would probably do another six cross hatch passes again with the compound. And then I think 
we will be in a good step to then leave that for polishing. Okay guys, so we're going to come in for the second pass. I am going to try and do this where you can see. So again, it's a bit fiddly working, holding this with one hand and the bottle with one hand. But we are now, as it's our second pass and we have a really nice clean primed pad, we are just going to drop down to three beans. Well, that didn't come out too great. So I'm gonna put less there to compensate for that. So there we go, we got our three bits of polish on there, looks like a face. <laughs> right, and we are gonna drop the speed down on this machine to one, and we are gonna put the thin film of product over our target area. So once that's down there like that, your risk of splattering is instantly reduced, and we've got hardly any speed. So I'm just gonna lay this out quickly now. Okay, so that's our product laid out in a nice thin film. So now it's gonna be impossible for us to splatter anything because the product is too thin. So we're gonna up the speed to four, maybe four and a half, just a little bit more. And we are gonna give this our second and final um, uh, run of compounding. So again, I'm gonna try and stick to two minutes and um, six passes. So here we go.
Okay, so I think I probably worked that compound for well over two minutes there. I was really trying to get that marring out for the bird poo. So I'm going to just shut this down and then we're going to inspect the work. I'm going to wipe this off the same way I did before. So I'll just show us wiping this particular thing off in case it's, it's of interest. So no IPA initially, just get as much of the uh, polish off as you can with the cloth. Um, it should stick to one side really. Because that's most of it off. Now a little quick squirt of IPA or mist of IPA. Hopefully get a bit more misting going this time. Yeah, that'll do. That's more than enough. And then I'll wipe down with the IPA. That will break these oils down and I'll really be able to see where we are in terms of how much of that damage has been corrected. I can see all straight away we are looking pretty damn good. Oh, hmm, there's still a bit of marring there, but that's bird poo marring. Okay, right, just gonna pause the camera and then we're gonna do an inspection. Okay guys, so just here on a manual focus. So this is after our second um, set of uh, passes over the paint. So again, you can see that horrible uh, kind of what we're dealing with, what we started out with, that real, just playing around with the focus that really snaps in, there we go. So we were dealing with some pretty nasty stuff then we come over to the paint that's been polished and we have got a really good level of gloss and correction there's some damage there that's not going to come out that's gone all the way through <coughs> and also that bit of bird poo marring these are still are there and it will come out and we are here to get this clear coat good so i am just going to actually work on that little particular section on its own because um, I need to go a little bit deeper, but there's no point in me going over areas where there's no real, there's not much more damage. So I'm going to just do a little bit of individual correction on that. Um, so yeah, that is two passes with the Flex 3401 um, on, on very heavily damaged paint. It's very easy to do. We've done a basic technique of laying out our product at speed one and then very slowly working that compound uh, between speed four and five with a very low arm speed of about one inch per second and minimal downward pressure. About the equivalent, equivalent downward pressure as, a, as putting the weight of the tool on top of the tool again. And that has given us a really good level of correction. And this paint still feels, it feels really nice and smooth but it's slightly sticky and when you um, use a, a, a final stage polish that's when you don't the stickiness goes and you get this lovely silky smooth um, thing so this is just the first stage of compounding to take out damage and really the point is to show you that if you take it slowly and easily um, you know you're using good products and good tools and the prep is good you can achieve I'd say we've got at least 90% paint correction there. We had a ton of damage, we really did. You can see it, you, you know from watching the video, you know, there was a ton of damage in this clear coat. And um, yeah, we're gonna have some fun trying to get all of this damage out. I don't think we, well, we won't get it all out. But um, just with two simple passes over the clear coat with a good compound and a good tool, those are my fingerprints there we have got a very nice level of paint correction going on. So we're gonna pause here because I'm running out of battery power. Okay guys, so we're finishing compounding one half of the bonnet. I think we've got somewhere over 90% correction. So we had a lot of damage, which we've seen quite a few times. And we've gone from micro scratches now really the sort of stuff that if you really want to take out you have to go very very deep and the risks start ramping up so we've done two sets on each target area which is taking out a very nice amount of damage and now we are going to be polishing so compounding is generally where you do the high cut stuff you're correcting the damage 
that the abrasives in those compounds are generally bigger and more aggressive so they don't leave you as flat a finish as the smaller micro abrasives in the polish so um, we will now be moving on to the polish one thing I didn't mention with this is we're not using any sort of water spray or detailer spray on these compounds to help wipe them off the reason being is you don't need to compounds which bed down dry up and dust up can be a right nightmare and any compound that does that on you and you have to squirt it with water um, to revive it or um, you know kind of make it looser not so it, so it's less prone to sort of baking onto the paintwork don't use those sorts of compounds um, there are big differences between all sorts of compounds and the compounds and polishes which I've which we're using today, the Shoal S3 and the um, Shoal S3 XXL Gold and the Shoal S40. They don't do it, so um, use them. Okay, right. So we've swapped over on the Flex to our white polishing pad. Um, so this, what's this, a slightly lighter. Um, with smaller kind of cells of foam which are more suitable to, for using the sort of finer abrasives in the S40 um, polish. So again this polish needs to be shaped so I'll just do that with one hand. Okay. Right here we go I'll try and get Get that so you can see it might be a bit out of focus but here we go so because we haven't used the pad before we are going to put four large sort of um, dollops of polish on this pad because that will factor in priming it as well there we go so it's quite a lot of polish and we do exactly the same principle as we did before oh I'm just going to pause this, my mobile phone's going. Hold on. Okay, so we've got our polish on our pad. And basically, we are going to be doing the same method um, that we, uh, we use for the compounding. We are going to be um, laying out our polish, which is the key thing, so we don't throw any of it around. So let's lay it out first, down to speed one. So put this thing on the paintwork. Get this on our shoulder so we don't slap it on the paint. Make sure you can see, you can. And we're just gonna lay, lay this out. Okay, it's nice and squeaky that is. It's a fresh pad for you. Um, so we've laid this out in a, on a nice uh, even film. Now we're going to up this. I'm going to go a bit faster with this. And this is where a lot of people will have different ways of doing it. So I like to work the polish quite fast. And um, I, don't, I like to use a bit of pressure initially. Now, this is the bit where you're starting to get into um, realms of where you, you, know, you, you can't see the difference in finish. But what I like to do is if I'm doing two polishing sets, so... Uh, I'm going to do, again, work this polish for about two minutes and six, roughly six passes. Nice and slow, slow arm speed, minimal pressure, just a little bit of pressure. Um, you do not want to be grinding that, pushing that pad down in there. Um, I will tend to do the first pass with a little bit of pressure and quite hard. And then the second set of passes just ramp down a little bit with a little bit less pressure. Um, so here we go. This is the first set of passes. So I'm going to try and do this for two minutes.
So that was well over two minutes. That must have been about three minutes. Well, the one thing with this polish is it still hasn't dried up, so you can keep going really till you start scooping it off, but there's no point going uh, for too long. So I'm gonna wipe this down now. See, no, no, um, no detail spray or anything really needed to, to get this off the car. It hasn't stuck down. It's loaded up with lubricants, which is why it's one of my favorite um, compounds and polishes. So it's so easy to take off. Um, really see. So what that gives me, it will probably be hard to pick up on camera, is the image or the reflection of the um, of the light has become even more crystal clear. Um, let's just give this a little squirt of IPA. That's probably enough. Yeah, let's just turn that around. Okay, just wipe that off. So again, the IPA is wiping, breaking down any oils that are left on this paintwork so that we can really get a good view. Slightly less important when you're doing polishing other than paint correction so obviously with paint correction you're trying to get all those scratches and um, visible damage out of the car. Um, with polishing you are trying to get the clear coat really poppy and smooth and reflective. So I don't want to touch this clear coat now because I'm going to smudge it up. But um, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and bring you in just show you some.